True, nervous, very, very dreadfully nervous I had been and am. But why will you say that I am mad? The disease has sharpened my senses, not destroyed, not dulled them. Above all was the sense of hearing acute. I hear, I heard all things in heaven and on earth. I heard many things in hell. How then am I mad? Hearken and observe how healthily, how calmly I can tell you the whole story. It is impossible to say how the first idea entered my brain, but once conceived, it haunted me day and night. Object there was none, passion there was none. I loved the old man. He had never wronged me. He had never given me insult. For his gold, I had no desire. I think it was his eye. Yes, this it was. He had an eye of a vulture, pale blue eye, with a film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. And so by degrees, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man, and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Now at this point, you fancy me mad. Mad men know nothing, but you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded with the caution, with the foresight, with the dissimulation. I went to work. I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I killed him. And every night, about midnight, I turned the latch on his door and opened it, oh so gently. And then, when I made an opening sufficient for my head, I put it in a dark lantern, all closed, closed, that no light shined out. And then I thrust my head, oh you would have laughed how cunningly I thrust it. With a loud yell, I threw open the lantern and leaped into the room. He shrieked once, once only. In an instant, I dragged him to the floor and pulled the heavy bed over him. I then smiled gladly to find the, med, the, the deed done so far. But for many minutes, the heart beat on, on with a muffled sound. This, however, did not vex me. It would not be heard through the wall. I cut off the head and arms and the legs. I then took up three planks from the flooring chambers and deposited between the skull scaltolings. I'm recording. Still at midnight, as the bell sounded the hour, there came a knocking at the door. There entered three men, who introduced themselves with perfect suavity. As officers of the police, a shriek had been heard by a neighbor during the night. Suspicions of foul play had been aroused. Information had been lodged at the police office, and they, the officers, had been deputed to search the premise. I took my visitors all over the house. I bade them search, search well. I led them at length to his chamber. I showed them his treasures, secure, undisturbed, in the enthusiasm of my confidence. I brought chairs into the room and desired them here to rest for their fatigues, while myself, in the wild audacity of my perfect triumph, placed my own seat upon the very spot beneath which exposed the corpse of the victim. No doubt. I now grew very pale, but I talked more fluently, and with a heightened voice, yet the sound increased. What could I do? It was a low, dull, quick sound, much as a sound as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. I gasped for breath, and yet the officers heard it not. I talked more quickly, more vehemently, but the noise steadily increased. Villains, I shrieked, dissemble no more. I admit the deed. Tear up the planks. Hear, hear. It is the beating of his hideous heart. I did it. He's right there. The body. <laughs> <laughs> Gita shots, Gita shots, Gita, get your close up, Gita, 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 Gita,